have a noon meeting. So if this runs uh, off. Approval of the agenda. And yeah, I'm going to show you. <laughs> we're gonna have to have everybody be quiet here. We're start at the meeting. Thank you. I'm Sharon. Who was the second? Doug. Doug was the second. Want us to vote down? All those in favor, then say aye. Thank you. Opposed? Okay. Approval of our minutes from the April third meeting. Tracy. I'll second. Okay. All right. Any changes, any corrections? Uh, hearing none, then all those in favor say aye. Opposed. All right. Elections of officers. I make a motion, or I want to nominate him for chairman. I'll second it. Chairman. I don't know if we have to have seconds for that. No, you don't. No, I don't think oh, really? so. Mm -hmm. Good. Is there any others? Hearing none, do we vote? We better vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? None? Okay. Vice Chair. Nominate Sharon. Sharon. The other volunteers? No, you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hearing none, all those in favor then of Sharon as vice chair? Aye. Opposed? No. <clears throat> we have a chair and a vice chair. We will move to public comment if we have any. Then, uh, is anyone here for just general? Or are they all here for uh, the public? Uh, Hearing, hearing public hearing. hearings that we're going to have. We're all you're all for that then. OK. All right, then we'll have no public comment. Uh, receipt, nobody else. There is not another. Number six is done. All right. Timber sales is. Is it here? Hey, oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> so Brent has some family issues to deal with. Okay, so we'll keep that something. One, sure. Need one to the minutes. Uh, again, I'm Paul Heimstead. I'm the DNR County Force Liaison. Uh, I work a quarter, just a background. A quarter of my time is spent on the county forest and uh, helping Brent with field work and then making sure that the county adheres to the state statutes that the county forest is under. So that's mainly my job, but I'm filling in him for today for, for timber sales. The committee, um, according to state statutes, has to approve all timber sales. So that's why we're here. We had our bid opening yesterday. Uh, we sent out five timber sales for bids about a month and a half ago. We received 16 bids, which is not bad. Um, see on the total sold value is $262,491. Um, more than doubled our minimum prices. Huh. Um, we'll go through these uh, one at a time, Kim. Uh, so, so it gets reflected in the minutes who the high bidder was. Sure. Yes. With the amounts. And then at the end, I'll just need a motion to approve those okay. for sales unless there's there's questions. But sure. uh first sale was ATV ATV Dune sale. Uh that received one bid uh from Dijac Forest Products um for eight thousand nine hundred and twelve dollars and fifty cents. That was the only bid on that sale. Uh, Itchy Ivy sale received four bids. High bid was from Tri State Lumber and Land for $27,292. Uh, third sale on the list, Head Scratcher received no bids. Uh, once a sale goes no bids by uh, public advertisement, we can sell that direct. We had a logger uh, inquire about that, so we sold that direct yesterday afternoon uh, for the minimum 
minimum price that was to Roger Hoyt logging, $6,840. And then the two better sales, the fourth one down Connors Lake um, received five bids, high bid from Struck logging, it's from Lady Smith, $41,062. And then our largest sale, <clears throat> Creepy Crow up in Lorraine, uh, received a bunch of bids. High bid again was from Tri-State uh, Logging and Land for $168,385. Um, and those were, the, those were the bids. So if you have questions, I'll take them, uh, process or anything in particular, but otherwise just need a motion. All right, so yeah, at least you had a just the one was the only one that didn't have more. Yeah, and it was so. it was poor quality uh, up in Sterling. Oh, uh, okay. low, low, low volume per acre, and uh, pulp prices are fair to poor, and so that's what most of that was. And just yeah, not not a lot of interest in that one. But again, we sold it direct to a guy, so everything sold. So so everything that was down there sold. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyone have any questions? It's always interesting to see the variations of the bids because I mean they go from one extreme to the other. Yeah, yeah it's uh, even like the biggest sale you see there, uh, lowest bid at ninety five thousand, mm -hmm. high bid at one sixty eight. So a lot of folks can for maybe people in the room, you know, does that mean that the guy that bid ninety five thousand is trying to rip you off? No, nope, that's what he thinks he can make money at. Mm -hmm. They all have different markets different speed of production, different equipment. Yeah. And so it doesn't mean he's trying to, you know, buy low, sell high, right? So he's trying to get it as cheap as he can, but still make money. So yeah, that's that's why we bid timber and even, you know, private individuals should get bids because you don't know. Yeah, yeah. You don't know. That's true. <clears throat> All right. Hearing no questions, I'll entertain a motion then. To I'll make a motion. Tracy to pass these on. Is there a second? Second. Second from Doug. All right then. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And Brent will get contracts with all these guys and then we administer those timber sales. They're usually two or three year contracts. And so we always have you know sales in the works on the books being set up and sold. So it's sure. a continuous process. So uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Thank Great. I'm out. Okay. Can I do the fees? Yeah, let's let's do the fee scan. Let's go down to number nine. As long as we have 20 minutes here. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. Hey, good morning. What you have before you is the um, the environmental services fee schedule um, that we've had for 2024. Uh, as I understand it, obviously I was not here for the new change, but this was a 5% increase last year in these fees. Um, and after really looking at some of the surrounding areas and talking with council, um, it's staff that we sustain those fees for this year and that we do not raise them. So um, I don't know how you've done this in the past, but I understand that this fee schedule is a, actually adopted formally through the budget process in August. So right now it's for you to take a look at and to understand what we have as far as um, charges for services in the division. We did receive one complaint on the on the fee schedule uh, regarding additions to dwellings greater than 144 square feet, that $320. And at this time, staff is looking at some options and maybe some surrounding areas for replacement costs. Um, for example, just to replace replace posts versus maybe the entire um, porch. So, kind of looking at maybe a, a schedule for that or like a sliding scale with a less cost. Um, are there any questions on the fee schedule? Okay. 
Okay, so with inflation and everything, we're just going to leave it. We can cover it. Well, and, and then with the raise last year, I will say um, I'm still trying to fully analyze where we're at with revenues, you know, because you don't want to obviously be as far as revenues, you know, sure. the over under. Um, and so we did have that 5% last year. Um, I don't know, Malia, did you want to make any comments about the fee schedule that we've talked about? The things that in recent history has been contemplated is, was fees should cover the cost of the service, right? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, in academia, the separation between when you charge a fee or when you allow general levy dollars or taxes to pay for it is whether there's a public benefit. And while the applicants uh, who are, you know, pulling these permits have a vested interest in, in that service, so does the rest of the community because it increases tax base when we have improvements on property or new homes being built. Um, and we do have a housing shortage. And when we look at surrounding counties and if their fees are substantially high, uh, excuse me, lower in surrounding counties, you know, somebody who's looking to build might decide to go to Barron or Burnett rather than come to Polk. And so there is some some value. So dividing how much you want the applicant to bear the burden of that entire cost versus the, the levy dollars and saying the community has an interest in this development as well. So I, there is, you know, that philosophy that I think you can lean on to look at whether or not you want to increase fees and say we want to put the entire burden of the cost of the service on on the property owner. OK, but the, now this can be changed at the end of the year before the budget if if something comes up. If things so, change, so then this is just sit the out information a right now and yeah. let it marinate um, so that you can think about it more once it comes to budget time. This this went through last year and went up pretty well, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is this is typically adopted by the board in August, and then the, those numbers are used to project revenue for 2025. Sure. The one thing, obviously, through the summer, it gives us a little bit better uh, opportunity to look at where we're at with revenues as far as what we're seeing through the summer and the busy building season, too. So we can have that discussion. Sure. All right. Wasn't a lot of complaints last year with the fee schedule. It was just that a little bit on the porches. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Is, is land and water? I can pass them out as well. I have that. Um, not sure. A presentation or do we get it and get a presentation later? Well, I mean, if uh, Eric would want it to come up. Yeah, I think he had planned on talking with the the committee a little bit about the annual report that he's providing. This is the um, area of the division. Obviously, we're in the water resources department. The land information um, land information report will be presented next month on in June. Um, gives us a little more time for audit as well as sure. for some final numbers. Um, Shabana, sorry. I'll take digital if you want later. Digital. Great. And look at who miraculously just showed. Just walk. Yeah. It's not close. <laughs> Probably got my hints on that. I did. I was listening, wondering if it would go early. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'll introduce myself. Those uh, new faces in the room, Eric Whitecheck, County Conservationist for the Land and Water Resources Department. And I'm happy to provide our 2023 annual report for the, the last year. It's a new format, um, kind of went under an overhaul. So it's, uh, it's shorter and easier to read. And I think it's an improvement on the previous annual report. So um, if you'll just quick page through, got a table of contents, we've got some of our department information, uh, our staff listing, contact information. A year in review uh, from my perspective, and then uh, we moved into family program accomplishments. And first and foremost, the Land and Water Stewardship Award. Uh, we've got the write up on that. We'll go into uh, 
our soil and water program accomplishments, just touching on conservation practices installed, uh, nutrient reductions associated with those practices, um, just quantifying some of the results of our work. Get into some of the uh, surface and water quality uh, accomplishments, invasive species prevention, and then our outreach and education that we provided. Move into ordinance program administration on uh, page eight, and we talk about our our stormwater and erosion control ordinance, our animal waste and water quality ordinance, um, non-metallic mine reclamation ordinance, um, some of the the measurable uh, activity there. And I will say under the Farmland Preservation and Working Lands Initiative, uh, I did find an, an error there. Um, some of my updates did not did not save, so I need to uh, I need to update that and I will when I serve this up on the website. So um, the farmland preservation, it should be six annual certifications. And uh, the the last three bullets should be removed and replaced with uh, a grant request for our county plan update. And we started our 10 year farmland preservation plan up process, which we've shared with you in a prior meeting, but I need to revise that. My apologies that for some reason did not capture in the final draft. Uh, the last uh, part of the report touches on some of our featured programs. These are programs that are that are large. Uh, large programs that take a fair amount of our time. And uh, we feel they're they're kind of the well, they include some of the core functions that we uh, we work on as a department. Our groundwater wellness program, uh, the undeveloped lake study that was uh, directed from this committee. We've got that reported in there. Our large scale targeted runoff management grant for the Balsam Lake watershed and our farmer led watershed protection program. And last but not least, and we just wrap this up here uh, Friday of last week and, and Monday of this week, our tree scale program touched on some of the uh, 2023 accomplishments there. Um, touched on some of our intergovernmental services with the uh, assistance with the Clam Falls Dam drawdown. And then we round out the uh, report with our youth programs and, and some of the uh, the winners of our poster contest, speaking contest, and, and other uh, youth education programs that we, we provide. So I hope you, uh, you find this new format um, appealing. And uh, if you have any questions, reading through it on your own time, please reach out. My contact information is in there, but if there's any questions at this point, I think we've got a little time. Anybody have any questions? What was the most fun collecting them muscles at the Clam Lake Dam? I will say that it that was enjoyable, and the the best part about that was the excitement of the volunteers that helped. They really appreciated the opportunity to learn more about the Clam Falls system, and um, they the, they were really having a good time searching and finding freshwater mussels and learning about them. So you know those are species that people don't oftentimes. Uh, see easily, and so they learned a lot, and I think every one of them appreciated it and and know a little bit more about the uh, body of water they live on. So that was it was a good experience for all. Chair, if I could just add a few things. Part of my division director's report was going to just talk a little bit about last Friday and the dispersal of seventeen thousand trees on Arbor Day. Um, Eric touches on it in the tree and seed sale program, um, but I just wanted him to maybe 
um, give a little more information about last Friday um, and the number of constituents that we served. Um, and uh, I was out there help, you know, just enjoying the day as well. And I, I just thought it was incredible. So. Yeah, it's it's one of our more forward facing programs. Um, and we interact with over 300 people over the course of that program. And uh, this year we went to an online store, which uh, went really well. We'd like to continue that. <laughs> we picked up new customers um, and it created efficiencies for us as a department and staff. So that, that went over well and we had positive feedback. As Sarah mentioned, yeah, our, our tree sales was roughly 17,000 trees. And I think in the end, we probably 310 customers, I'm, I'm estimating, who all purchased trees. Some are, are county residents, some are neighboring county residents, but all those trees are planted locally. And this is a program that started, we, we haven't identified the exact year, but it would have been right around 1980. Then in 1978 and 82, somewhere in there. So it's a long standing program for, for this department. Uh, it's, uh, it's well received by the community. Yeah, positive feedback was great. Also wanted a quick shout out facilities for their help in making sure that we were able to utilize the shed. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it, it was just a great day. So they all came on that Friday, didn't they, to pick up? Yeah, yep. Most everyone goes up on Friday to pick up their orders, and we have a few people that can't make it, of course, we make accommodations for them to pick up either before or the Monday after. But yeah, the bulk of the people come 7 a.m. Um, to about 6 p.m. on Friday. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Please take a short break and get ready. Sounds good. There's not much we really can get done in five otherwise, can we? All right. No. We'll take a short break and then we, we'll, we'll take these right in order, I think, for the so, sitting there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. You guys ready? All right, go ahead. All right, just before, so for the new members, I am Logan Hacker, the Polk County Zoning Administrator. Um, glad to have you guys aboard the committee. We will, we got four of these today, so we're gonna start right in order. First one is um, Jennifer Hepperbecker requests a district change from Agriculture 10 or A1 to Residential Agriculture 5, RA5, for a parcel located at 3575 150th Street, 150th Street in section four, town 37, range 17 West in the town of West Sweden. The parcel number is 0480070000 and the parcel is 0.3 acres. Uh, Claire has this property pulled up. Um, the property as mentioned is 0.3 acres. It is currently zoned AG-10, um, and the purpose of this rezone is to reduce the side lot line setbacks to AG-10 having a 25-foot side lot line setback, and this lot only being 75 feet wide. Going down to RA-5 would allow it to be 10 feet on the side lot lines, which is a more common residential area um, setback. We do have residential dwellings on Diamond Lake um, right across the street from, from them. I think there's three or four dwellings along the lake there. Diamond Lake is a class three lake. Um, the town of West Sweden board, they did approve the minutes on March 19th, 2024. Um, there is no wetlands, floodplain or navigable water on the property. 
Um, the entire property is within 300 feet of Diamond Lake. Um, so there would be, they would fall under the impervious surface calculations. Um, if your entire property, even if you don't touch the water or a riparian parcel, if the whole non-riparian parcel is within 300 feet, it does um, fall under the impervious surface. Just so that will be um, looked at when the permit comes in for a dwell. There is only one current structure on the property. It's a pretty old accessory building, it looks like, um, but it's it looks like it's not abandoned, but are pretty close to abandoned buildings. Um, the latest permit we had on the property was back in 1982. There was an addition to an old dwelling that was there. So it was used as a residential property in the past. Um, I think that's all I have. We do have some pictures from the site that I took yesterday. One nice day this week. Yeah, <laughs> pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So this is actually where the fire number is. So there's not um, that developed of a driveway anymore. Um, there might be a better picture coming up, but that's the old accessory building that's on the property right now. Um, next picture, uh, there's a better picture of the building. So not much of a building. So the dwelling that was for the permit in 82 or whatever that was, that's totally gone. Yep, there's no dwelling on the property. And that's looking from the property to Diamond Lake across the uh, 150th Street there. That's looking from the lake to the property. So it's be some pre removal on there. But um, that's all I have for staff report on this one. Okay. And just for that 82 when there was no sewer or well on any of the purpose was it so it was probably uh, a trailer or something yeah i didn't see any sanitary okay uh are the owners here yes yeah okay would you like to come up and speak or add to this i think Logan did a great job i don't have a lot to say but i i feel that if you would come up state your name and then the add then we'll see if there's anybody for or against I'm Ryan Hefferbecker. Okay. Um, current owner of the property. Just took ownership through family who's owned the property for quite some time. And uh, for the rezone so that we could put a, a structure uh, placed more ideally towards towards the back. Any questions? I would be happy to field. Do you know if there was ever a, a sewer or a well on the I don't know for sure, but I, I don't have any permits stating that there were. That there was. Okay, that would be one. Okay. Uh, no, I don't think there's anyone else. It's more or less a rezone anyways. Right? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Is anyone else here to talk for or against this? Okay. I guess not. So go ahead then give us. Uh, yeah, the findings and facts. Yeah. So the findings and facts for this property, um, the request is involving a 0.3 acre parcel in the town of West Sweden. The town approved the rezone request on their March 19th meeting. The property is located within 300 feet of Diamond Lake, which is a class three lake. Um, there are three residential dwellings on the lake side of 150th and the land use on the same side as this property is mixed forest and agriculture. Um, the applicant purchased the property on December 28th of 2023, um, but it sounds like it was family transaction. Um, there is one old accessory building currently on the property. The purpose of this rezone is to reduce the side lot line setbacks from 25 feet to 10 feet um, to accommodate 
or more easily accommodate the construction of a residential dwelling due to the current lot size. Um, parcel has access off of 150th Street, which is a town road. There are no wetlands, floodplain, or navigable water present on this parcel. And the county did provide a proper class two legal notice prior to the hearing, and we did not receive any public comments for or against. So as for conclusions of law, um, changing the zoning of this property to residential agriculture five or RA five is supported by the town of West Sweden. Some of the surrounding lots are used for residential purposes. So rezoning the property complies with the Polk County comprehensive plan, existing and surrounding land use will not have a negative impact on the existing public infrastructure. So I think there's a little bit lower clear. The staff recommendation would be to approve this rezone to the full county. OK. All right, does anyone have anything to add there? I think you caught us all uh, for a zoning change. All right, so we can close the public hearing and then we can decide the vote for or against. But I'll entertain a motion either way. A motion we approve. Motion Second. to approve. We move to the full board under the consent agenda. Correct. Seconded by Gracie. Any other questions? All those in favor then say aye. 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 All right. First zoning change went through. <laughs> Open up the next one. The next public hearing um, is Turtle Lake Holdings LLC requests a district change from residential agriculture five to industrial um, for a parcel located in section 36, town 34 north, range 15 west, and the town of Beaver. Parcel number is 0080931000, and the parcel size is 27.39 acres. So this is uh, the highlighted parcel here is the parcel requesting to rezone. Um, and there's actually, the request isn't to rezone the whole parcel. Um, so the whole thing right now is RA5. The request is to, and we have a picture later on, a straight line down from here. This section would be the, um, the zone that would be rezoned to industrial. The rest would be kept in RA5. Um, surrounding areas. So this is the village of Turtle Lake or city of Turtle Lake. Um, this is an industrial park and it is zoned um, business park for their zoning. Um, so it is right across the road um, from the town of Beaver with their industrial park. They're looking to get industrial right across the road from there. The reason for the request is Veresco currently has um, an operation in the industrial park. Um, this property would be used in conjunction with that business. They would do light manufacturing on this property. And I know they're working with DOT. They want to pipe the materials under the road into that existing um, operation on the other side of the road. So they would take the packaging tear it down to the whatever's inside of that packaging and send it over there to be um, used for renewable energy. Um, the current property, as you can see, is currently used entirely for agriculture. Um, and it's all a tilled crop there. The property has access off of both US Highway 63 on this side and then down here off of 125th Avenue which is a town road. Um, the town of Beaver did approve this rezone. Or, um, I believe it was March. March 21st meeting. 
Um, and there is no wetland, floodplain, or navigable water on this parcel. That's all I have for the staff report. Okay, so they're only going to do like six acres or seven, whatever that gets. Yeah, I think it ends up being 10 acres. Um, yeah, okay. That they want it, and they're going to leave the rest. Yep. Yeah, we can go into the pictures here. Let's let's look just to make sure we know. So I did just I did make it out to the site, but Google Maps didn't do just as well of a um, job here, or maybe even better. So this is looking to the east. This is their current facility over there, um, looking south on US 63. This is looking north towards the um, village of Turtle Lake. Once again, there's the building that they would be sending the product over to um, and north on 63. And then the next picture just shows the current land use is agriculture fields. I think that's it for pictures. And then we also have a, a diagram showing their proposed footprint of the building. Okay, and that'll be with other permits, won't it, when that comes Yep, up. so this is, to get an idea, it's, yeah, the Okay. Or it shows a better idea of what's going to be rezoned. So this is looking in, this is the line that would be rezoned. Um, if, yeah. So the, Yeah, that would be facing north down here, I believe. So I don't know. Yeah, so this would be an access off of US 63, and this would be coming off at 125th, and that shows the 10 acre area that always to be rezoned. What are the two properties on each side of it? Um, there's a cell tower on that corner. Right here, and then a cemetery on this northern parcel. So quiet neighbors. <laughs> yeah, very. We do have so the current property owner, I believe, is a credit trust, um, but they do have a purchase agreement. Turtle Lake Holdings, I do have a record of a purchase agreement stating that contention uh, or. Um, Contingent. Contingent on this going through, they would have that purchase. Okay. Now they're purchasing the whole twenty-seven dollar. Correct. Okay. And I'll let um, Joe talk a little bit more on it, but I believe their plan is to keep the rest of that in agriculture land. So. Okay. Or they have to come back anyway to change. Yep. If they wanted to expand. Okay. So we do have uh, someone here. Yep. Okay. You want to come up? State your name. Morning. <laughs> My name is Joe Burke, and I'm with Veresco, and Turtle Lake Holdings is part of Veresco. We're a renewable energy company. We take waste from uh, or byproducts from food processing and turn it into renewable electricity, which we sell to Excel Energy. Our plant is, as Logan laid out, our plant's actually in the industrial park in Turtle Lake. And um, this was the closest piece of land that was available for expansion. We're currently doing this process. We're just running out of room as there's been a, uh, obviously more interest with companies to find a beneficial use for some of the food byproducts and food waste that they're currently creating. Uh, my record was, uh... Was this an easier process to go this way than to be annexed into the village industrial park? Um, or is that an option later? I, you know what, I have no idea if the if the village Bill is interested. Can, can, annex, can they? They can ask. I mean, the the homeowner can ask to be annexed in. Oh, we've not asked the village to annex it. Okay. See, I just that was a yeah. question. That might. I did ask the village if they had any plans to annex it. 
Um, and I didn't get a response back from the village, but sure. Okay. I just thought that was something that could be next and that would save some maybe for infrastructure for sewer water and everything to yeah. it, whatever, but yeah. Okay. All right. Any questions that uh, pretty much that'll all come up when they do the building otherwise. Mm -hmm. So, so there's a little, an interesting fact that um, our DPAC supervisor shared with me yesterday. So Highway 63 is also known as Gaylord Nelson Highway. And Gaylord Nelson was a Wisconsin Senator and Governor. And he's from Clear Lake. And he actually founded Earth Day in the in 1970. So I thought that was a, an interesting connection to, I mean, we're a sustainability company, right? Our whole idea is to, for greenhouse gas footprint for customers we work with. So it's a, it's a good connection for us. Yes, it is. Interesting. One other point, um, we also work with the Wisconsin Department of Transportation to try and get access into this site off of Highway 63. They, that's not permissible. Um, they have designated Highway 63 from Highway 8 all the way down to the Southern Polk um, border and such that no more access will be allowed onto Highway 63. Ooh. So all of our access will come in off 125th. 125th, okay. Interesting, okay. Which is, it's not a problem for us. It would have been convenient to have access off of Highway 63. Uh, I was assured there was no possibility of that. Unless you annex into the cities. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think then is. Okay. I don't know. All right. That's, pretty... that's, okay. that's interesting. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions? None? But you own all that property, so you can, you would be able to do the access from 125th then? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the property borders 125th, so we can bring a driveway from the 125th. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone else here to speak for or against it? No one for or against. Okay, let's go through our findings. Uh, will you number these exhibits after? Well, yeah. The maps and stuff, just to be safe. Okay. So the findings for um, this potential rezone to industrial, um, the request is rezoning 10 acres of a 27.4 acre parcel in the town of Beaver. Um, the entire property is currently zoned residential agriculture five. The applicant desires to expand Bresco, which is currently operating across the highway 63 in the village of Turtle Lake Industrial Park. Town board, town of Beaver, town of Beaver board, um, approved the rezone on March 21st, 2024. Um, the surrounding property is zoned residential agriculture five um, on the west side of US 63, um, the land that falls in the town of Beaver, and then the, the land that is across on the east side is in the business park zoning of the village of Turtle Lake. Proposed access to the property is off 125th, um, so I will change that to take off US Highway 63 now that that is no longer an option. Okay. The current land use is entirely agriculture. There are no current buildings on the property. There are no wetlands, floodplain, or navigable water present on the parcel. And the county did provide a proper class two legal notice prior to this hearing and did not receive any public comments on this request. The conclusions um, changing the zoning of this property to industrial is supported by the town of Beaver. 
the surrounding lots in the village of Turtle Lake are used for industrial slash business park. And the surrounding lots in the town of Beaver are currently used for agriculture, a cemetery, and a cell tower. And I believe the staff recommendation is to recommend approval of the rezone to the full county board. Okay. Any questions on what he has? I think he got there with that. Was the 10 acres, not the 27, was it? Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll entertain a motion then. Tracy. I'll second it. Approved? Yes. Yeah. Move to the board under the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All those in favor then say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That one went well. Two new zonings went. Yep. Okay. For the next one, we are ready for the next. Let's open up the next one. I did have, I did receive this public comment before 10 a.m., but I was out in the field, so I don't know if you guys did get the email with it. If any else wants to go. Oh, sure. Well, I mean, so, it so it was received before the required time. I will do a little bit of a brief description of it in my staff report. All right. So Jeffrey and Jean Rodell request a conditional use permit um, of the Polk County Code of Ordinances for a proposed production and sale of wine or winery for a parcel located at 1351 310th Avenue in section 26, town 37, range 17 west, um, town of West Sweden. The parcel number is 048-00615-0000. And it is a 39.38 acre parcel. There has the um, 40 acre parcel pulled up here. Um, if you could zoom in a little bit. Guys, I think you have a black diagram showing. Um, so this is the parcel. This is the current um, vineyard they have. Um, this is their dwelling. This is the accessory building um, that is proposed to be used for that winery production um, and operation. Um, there is a chicken coop here and another accessory building on the property. Um, the only septic currently is for this dwelling. It is a three bedroom mound system. That other building does not have a septic system at this time. A does Agriculture 10 zoning district um, does require a winery to um, be a conditional use. Um, so that is why they are here requesting that today. Um, there are both delineated and undelineated wetlands. Um, they're all up on the northern end of the purple. Um, those darker areas are wetland fingers that come down from the north. Um, there's nothing pretty much on the whole southern half of the property for wetlands. The property, as you can see, is half open and half wooded. Um, the applicant did state that the town does have a Class B license available. Um, they do not have that approved yet, but it is available per the applicant, which maybe they will touch on that. Um, the Class 2 notice, um, we did properly notice the, the public hearing. We did receive one comment in opposition. Um, the main concerns from this comment were the increase in traffic and the risk it could pose um, with the heavy amounts of Amish traffic in the area. There is a large Amish community up there and also the uh, concerns of the possible strain on the local road infrastructure. And then they did have concerns on if this is going to turn into wedding events and other events at this location, um, disturbing the quiet nature of that area. 
Um, as I mentioned, there's no sewer yet for the proposed building. Um, we do have. We didn't receive any proposed conditions from the town of West Sweden on this winery proposal. Um, we do have some pictures go through and they'll show the driveway access better. This is looking. Looking to the south from their driveway entrance, um, there is a residence right across the road. This is they're kind of out of order here. It's my fault. Um, this is looking in front of their dwelling towards that chicken coop and um, that other accessory building and showing some of the driveway area they have currently. This is looking um, to the east down. Um, what was it? One three tenth Avenue. But it's kind of on a hill. This is looking from their driveway towards that accessory building that would be used for the winery um, production. This is looking from their dwelling out towards their vineyard, current vineyard. And this is looking across the road from their property as well. I believe this is looking a little further to the west. This is showing the dwelling in relation to the accessory building um, that they propose to use. And this is looking back towards the village of Frederick. It's about a half a mile from the city limits, probably a mile from the um, Highway 35 that runs through Frederick. This is a general picture from the 310th Avenue looking at the property up the driveway. I think there was a map that I kind of went over in the file. Yeah. So this is just, I had a label showing everything I kind of already covered, but just a map to see the layout of the property in reference to the building they are proposing to use for their winery. You got the vineyard, the mound, the house, and then coming in the driveway, you have the proposed building and their other accessory buildings, one a chicken coop and one an accessory building. And I think that's all I have for a staff report. All right, any questions? So uh, let's maybe have the people, are they here? Here. State your names. Uh, ask me a few questions. I'm Jean Rado. I'm Jeff Rado. Yeah. Okay. You. What do you want us to? Students are far away. I guess first of all, to the public comment, we have no intentions of this becoming a wedding venue. Um, at all, this we just want a small, small tasting room, no big events, no, no big weddings, events, no none of that. Um, so what? What do you? Have? I your map doesn't show any parking. I mean, I'm going to go down through some of these questions here. Um, one of the uh, how many people would be there? But I mean, you know, we visited a couple other small wineries in the area, and, and usually what I've noticed is. 10 to 15 cars okay. at a time because people come buy wine or have a glass of wine go it's not an all day thing sure. so we're you know thinking accommodating 10 to 15 vehicles at a time so you need some parking yeah right so we've got some there and a, like i explained to logan uh, on the north side of where the proposed building is we can make a parking area there and the chicken coop is on skids that can be moved so that's not a big deal what about septic? Since you have a mound system for the house, would you be having, you'd have to have facilities? Well, I'm putting a holding tank in. Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't need septic for, I mean, processing the grapes or anything like that. Those are our crusty stems and um, we wash everything out um, with water on our crush pad and stuff like that. So, um, but to get started, we um, 
porta potties. If anybody's seen them, they look pretty nice in a trailer and um, for starting out, but getting a holding tank. So we're just in the beginning stages here. And right now you are, are you are making wine? We are, we are making just wine on small not, scale. Not on a small scale, hob, more of a hobby thing right now. Sure. Mm -hmm. Learning how to make wine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last year, um, we actually sold a lot of our, uh, a lot of our juice um, off to another winery up in Danbury. So if anybody knows Tommy Too High, that's where a lot of our um, juice went last we sold year. sold a lot of our juice to them. So. We also have the concern, and I put that when we wrote up our thing for this meeting, was the concern on the traffic on there. Um, it, um, I believe, I think it's supposed to be 45 on that road, and I, can, I can't tell well, you. Well, maybe even 35, but. I can't I mean, tell you. Somebody could, a county cop could sit there and write a t ticket all day long. It's it's bad. I mean, we're working in the vineyard, and they're just 60 miles an hour. 60 miles an hour, just go flying by. So if people are concerned about the Amish, it's like they should be concerned now the way people drive. Yeah, because. and there's a lot of AT, uh, UTV and ATV traffic on there too. And we just keep yeah. saying one of these days, somebody's going to get hit because they, as soon as they come over that first hill with the first original Amish family that moved in, it's like they come barreling yeah. down the road. If so familiar where the schoolhouse is. Once they come over the hill, hit the schoolhouse, they just. Just gun. <laughs> I, I actually wish there was um, posted speed yeah. So we're also concerned about the Amish community and and also the quietness in, of the neighborhood, and that's why we want to keep it small, nothing and big like if you've been to Dancing Dragonfly or something like that. We're not. Okay, so so a parking is going to be a concern because it looked pretty wet out there. It's going to be. Well, that's with all the rain and. Well, it's a that's normal, and so the soils are heavy, so you have to. You're going to. Yeah, be it's. Normally, it's not like that in the right way. But yeah. I don't know if they can bring up that. Well, you want to show them on there? What's that? Show them what? So this whole area right here is where we're looking at for parking. We can, and then we could also make a parking area right here. Okay. And then in front of here. So, so, so that I what we want to do is have anybody parking in the road, and it's and. To the concern about the hill too, it is a hill. It's a little blind. You got to be kind of careful, but it's not a total blind hill. So it's just you do have to be careful with the hill. Uh, what kind of hours are you are you thinking? We can, uh, go ahead. Weekends only. Saturday, For, Sunday. Maybe Friday, Saturday, Sunday in the summertime. Um, Ten to five, eleven to five. Okay, because that would be possibly a condition to help people concern that you'd have traffic all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so parking would be a condition. And then the need. But that would all go in there. <clears throat> for a CUP, yeah. That's what they're applying for. Yeah, that ha would have to be listed as conditions in it. That's this is yeah. what they're applying for conditional yeah. use right now. Yes, yeah. the conditions. Of, that's what I'm trying to get. Hours, hours uh, park, that they have parking. Parking. Uh, days I mean, of operation. Days and days and days and hours. Uh, and we should. Does the health have to come in and check this? Uh, uh, building probably eventually. The, the state of Wisconsin has to come in, and um, once we get through this hurdle, then we can start. Um, with the state of Wisconsin and federal, but we'll have to be inspected for our winery. For both, okay. Mm -hmm. So we, that's the other permit. We can't move forward until we get approval that. Okay. Uh, do we know if a building inspector has to go if that building is good enough for public to be in? Is that the health part? Do we know that, Malia? I ask you. Well, if they're just gonna have, a, if they're gonna have like a tasting room, I. My gut reaction would say that the health department would have to go in and inspect I, and, and license that. But I, I believe it's well, unless it's different inspection, but I know we're not going to serve any food. And if you do serve food, it can be like you buy it at Daffler's prepackaged cheese or like Burnett Dairy prepackaged yeah. cheese and sausage. You can do that. But as far as food prep, that's a different type of inspection. Sure. Yeah. 
that is. You, or you had mentioned that there was a class B license available. Is there any concern that you think you would have access to it? No, what did she did? She told you that we could. Yeah, we originally when we met with um, West Sweden is they thought we could only get an A, um, which if that's what it was going to be, it was going to be. But then um, then I talked to I can't remember her name. Anyway, she approached me when we had elections and she said that she did find out they can get us a class B. So a class B means you can have on and off on and off sale. Yeah, yep. beer and wine. Yeah, OK. Mm -hmm. But we are the tasting room is not. I mean, the structure's there. The tasting room is not built. So we're just planning. We just want, you know, the the you know approval that we can make so the wine. You need a building permit yet too, if you're going to do the tasting. In, inside, yeah, the to do the inside work, correct? Okay. But we haven't done anything with that. So. We haven't done anything with the tasting room. Okay. No. All right. It's just a shell. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's just a shell. It's okay. <laughs> on that side, yeah. On that, yeah. Okay. okay. So road, when you do your driving parking, it would be a concern that you do something for the soil erosion. OK. All right. Is anyone any more questions of them right now? Mark, do we need to put on their impervious so they put something on? Yeah, I think we, I think we should. Yeah. Yeah. They would have to, you yeah. Oh, you got a pretty comprehensive voice, I think. I, I just keep trying to, yeah, yeah. days and hours. Yeah. And then we'll see what staff has, too. All right. Thank you. We'll just see. Is anybody <laughs> you're good for now? Yeah. We'll see. If any, is anybody else here to speak on this? If not, okay. We'll have Logan come back up then. Thank you. Thank you. And just go through some and then see what conditions we probably need to do. Yeah, we can go through the findings and then I have some conditions. Below. Okay. The findings of facts um, for proposed winery. Additional use permit request involves a 39.38 acre parcel on 310th Avenue, which is east of the village of Frederick. This property had been owned by the applicants jointly since 2011. They would like to operate a winery, which is a conditional use in the Agriculture 10 zoning district. The parcel has a driveway off of 310th Avenue. There are both delineated and undelineated wetlands on the north end of the property. There is no floodplain or navigable water on the parcel. Applicant plans to use the existing accessory building, which is approximately 40 by 72 for the winery operations and tasting room. Um, the parcel is half open and half wooded. There is one dwelling on the property with a three bedroom mound system. And there was an old privy permit um, that the owner stated is no longer used or it's not there at all, it's abandoned. Um, there is no current sanitary system for that accessory building. And the county did provide a proper class two legal notice prior to this hearing and received one public comment on this request in opposition. Um, so scroll down. Do you have a recommendation of granting the conditional use permit to operate a winery if the committee determines all the criteria have been met on the following conditions? Um, so these are some general conditions we've had um, for wineries. Um, they must obtain all proper permits, licenses, and meet all regulations from all other local and state agencies. Um, an erosion control plan is to be approved by the zoning department. Clearly delineate and mark property lines and parking areas. All parking shall be on site, not on the road, and shall meet the off street parking requirements of the county code of ordinances for size and spacing. Mac maximum occupancy of the building will be determined by the public health and sanitary system on site, uh, whichever is more restrictive. Um, some of these conditions were more for the wineries that were looking for kind of events as well. So sure. some of these might get struck from this um, condition, but we could keep them as well. Um, accessory buildings must not have sleeping accommodations. 
no RVs or campers allowed for overnight stay. All parking is to be on an impervious surface and must be contained on the property. Um, hours of operation, I just started with the general nine to nine. And the property must remain free from citation and charges for nuisance, disorderly conduct, or any other illegal activity. And the sanitary facilities shall meet Polk County Code of Ordinances, SPS 383, Wisconsin Administrative Code. Okay. So on the hours, nine to nine, they're going to be weekends, but I suppose we can leave it. Otherwise, they'd have to come back for a full hearing to change any of that, wouldn't they? Yes, they would if they change the condition. If, if we change just that one condition. So I don't know if they'd want to ever be open during the week or not. Or we, um, you know, so you're not limited to possibly sometime in the future in the summer without having to come back for everything. Right. Okay. If you yeah. want to leave it nine to nine and then we can we can put the hours that we want. Right. And we went. Yeah. So nine to nine, seven days a week is what we have on there. Is that what it said? Um, yeah, we just had the hours. We didn't have days on okay. the initial conditions. Yeah. So we probably put seven days because they'll be mostly weekends. So we should put seven days a week on there, and then that's they're covered kind of. Wouldn't have to come back for just one thing. Yeah. They wanted one more day or whatever. A Thursday or a Wednesday or so. It wouldn't limit them. To, yeah, we can do it. Okay. I just have a question on number five when it talks about a uh, sanitary, sanitary system on site for max mox can see. So that would include if they brought in, like she had mentioned, the, the trailers that are available that so that would. Or does it have to be a permanent sanitary system? Because then all of a sudden they would have to be put if I'm reading it right, they would have to put in a sanitary system before because their max mock can see now is based on that three bedroom home. Yeah, so that'd be um, up to the committee as far as if requiring a. Um, permanent sanitary system on site. Um, they're likely would need one depending on what kind of operation they're going to do. Um, it can't be discharged to the surface. Um, but so that would set a holding tank. Exactly. They're planning on yeah. a holding tank is what I wrote. Yeah, well, but she also mentioned to start with the kind of the trailers you yeah. can pull in. So, I mean, I just I'm just curious if that limits that they couldn't do that type of a thing it, with that statement. Not really. I mean, it'll be size pretty. It won't be size that big as a commercial because it is used as much. Right. So I just yeah. Covered, I just yeah. wasn't sure if 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 that needs to be worded different. That's and maybe okay. that's a legal. Or is so. that within that code that you can pull bring in, in temporary? Yeah. Bring in temporary to at least have something. Yeah, I know. I'm not completely familiar with how. I know we have permits for those types of um, systems like chemical toilets or an event. But most of them are, yeah, event based and we don't get permits for those. Um, so it might not be a bad idea to clear this up um, for what kind of sanitary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if they're proposing a holding tank, maybe that should be. No, not on there. Yeah. yeah. A holding tank. And then if they had a bigger event, they could bring the other things in. If that makes sense. Yeah, the holding tank would then be based off of. Um, there's a calculation in that code, so they would have to meet that um, for how much Side. their occupancy is for that building and um, whatever other uses they have. Okay. So that so number five, then we'd have we'd have to say <coughs> the maximum occupancy determined. Boom, 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 boom. That a sanitary system. <coughs> Uh, be permanent, a permanent one. Yeah, you could. Well, I mean, you could do a state approved, you know, state approved, state approved yeah. sanitary system state install before um, operation. Yeah. Okay. That would make more a state approved. Standard with. Mm -hmm. With yeah. the drawing for the parking that we were concerned, the wetlands and all, everything are plus 100 feet away. Uh, and we have that day to get all the other permits. I think that covers us. Everybody's good with the hours and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, that consensus. Okay. 
So before we go, is the owners, are you all right with that right now? Okay, yeah, I just, I just have one question. So, you know, our plans is to have the TC room open in about um, uh, two years. So we still have day jobs <laughs> um, <laughs> that keep getting away and with our expensive hobby. Um, but would, if we, I'm assuming if we got our, our liquor license and stuff approved for the town that we could do um, sale of, of the liquor, of the, of the wine, even because we don't have the taste room open, but we could do online sales. That would be the health department. That would not be us. Okay. Or an off sale, I think. Yeah, I think that would be through the health department. You'd have to, that okay. license, you'd have to so check. Then, then we'll go ahead with that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, like, this isn't going to be open this summer, but yeah. Yeah. It's definitely in process, but we just wanted to get the approval. Yeah, I think you have to go through that, check on them other yep. licenses and stuff to see how that's going to work. Yep. We can okay. move on to that next. All right. Yeah, I guess as far as the sale, because um, <clears throat> in order for them to get their actual conditional use permit, they would need to meet the conditions that we request prior to that. Correct. Um, I'm just trying to think of how that would work for if they just want to start selling wine instead of oh, not open to the tasting room prior to that. Yeah. Well, I don't think we can. We don't control the offsite. Yeah, we just control if they open up the tasting room. Isn't it? So, we're mm -hmm. okay. so until they open that up, what they do with their other licenses, yeah. if the health says they can sell off sale online, I don't think that's us. So it'd be yeah, like a home, Help us all in our home business then, maybe. <laughs> right. Yeah. And the state of Wisconsin has pretty pretty stringent or pretty clear lights about selling yeah. online or any of that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. And the oh, yeah. Sale, I mean they're. Yep. They've got their whole, whole set of yeah. hoops to jump through to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah we so know. about the condition of <laughs> bootlegging was easier. When your issue will be about conditions <laughs> yeah. to follow. Yep, right here. Yeah, yeah. we didn't Buy hear the that. The <laughs> yeah, so that, yeah, they've got a lot to go through. I, I, so I think by us saying on that on the first condition that they have to get all the mother license, I think we're covered. Yep. Right on the first one. Yeah. I think that, that yeah, makes us pretty nice. safe because they'll have to go through all the other stuff yeah. to do anything else. Right. And we knew we had to go town and then you guys before we could even look at that part. So, yeah. okay. All right. You need a spreadsheet. Yeah. 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 Oh, just a question. I don't even know if it can be answered here Um, in regards to, I mean, the is the the township able to post signs? I mean, I know unposted roads that in the state of townships of Wisconsin have a, I think it is 45, I think is what the, oh, the yeah. limit is. Oh, I mean, that's just supposed to be common knowledge, which it isn't. Um, <laughs> but is it something that that can be requested of the township to put actually post signs or is yeah. that, yeah. I mean, that's not something we would want because that's a township thing. That's not something we yeah. would want it's to put in here. We have the old highway commissioner will tell us. There you go. Any any road any road not posted in Wisconsin is 55 miles an hour unless posted. Yeah. Oh, it's 55 unless posted. Yes. Okay. Or if the township, some right. townships have it at 45. Okay. Yeah. All roads are. How would you know? Yeah. Yeah. Unless, the, but, but the townships can post speed limit signs. The township can go down 10, 10 miles from the post from the 55 miles an hour yeah. without a speed study. Yeah, but they can post a speed limit sign too. Yes, yes. And they can go down to 45. Yeah. If they go further than 45, they'll need a state review for a speed study. Thank you. All right. So is everybody good with the conditions then? Yeah. We're all pretty good with that. All right. What do you have then for the finding? Yeah, then we'll. Yeah, I think that was, uh, Gave the findings and the recommendation based on if the, um, the two changes determined that the criteria is yeah and the two changes are hours operation will stay at seven days a week nine to nine and then that number five will be a state approved sanitary to be installed prior yeah. to operation okay I think that's all I have for that. Conditions. Okay. Then do we have findings of fact then? And the way we. Um, or? So, yeah, I think those were what I went over. Oh, you went over those first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're yeah. good there. Oh, so we're. Okay. We're all right. 
Okay. Well, I will enter the motion for that. This one for or against. This, uh, we had a number of conditions. What was it, nine? 11. 11 conditions. Okay. Make a motion we approve with the 11 conditions that were identified. Second. Seconded by Doug. Uh, that can go on the consent agenda also. Go there? Oh, yes. I think it can, yes. Mm -hmm. To save it on that county, to save Jay some troubles. Conditional use permits? Uh, no, they don't no, have to. No, no. That's right, they don't have to. Okay. Just Good look. There. All right. All right. So, all the favor then say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that one was approved. Just remember to number that one letter we got for an exhibit number. On that one. All right, the last one is Glenn and Sandra Stevermer request a variance under section 32-68 apparent D of the Polk County Court Ordinances to create a buildable lot that does not meet the minimum size requirement for a park located at 28143 Street in section 2233 North, range 17 West in the town of Garfield. The parcel number is 024-00439-0000, and it is a 3.85 acre parcel. Um, to start, I think you guys all received um, the documentation from our ordinance as far as the jurisdiction of you guys hearing this case. It is kind of a um, unfamiliar case that you guys I don't know if you've ever heard of variance case because most of those go to the Board of Adjustment um, but because this subdivision is a looking for a variance to the late classification sizing it's not in chapter 236 um, so the ordinance states here in 32-70 um, that variances to design standards and the appeal process for that does go to the committee um, in which it lists there that a public hearing must be held. So that's where the jurisdiction comes in and why it didn't go to the Board of Adjustments. Was correct, wasn't it, Malia? The first question, so that's good. Do that. That's one of the ones that's asked yes. out that we looked that up and found. Yeah, yeah. I'm just seeing. Yeah. So this property, um, the current lot is 3.85 acres. There is a dwelling on the property right here. There is an accessory building, or actually two accessory buildings. One smaller, one's a garage. On an unnamed lake, which does um, consider that a class three lake then. Um, by the, if it's an unnamed lake in the DNR, it is a class three lake per our ordinance. Um, they are proposing that to create two lots out of this one parcel. Um, the split is approximately right in here. We will look at the proposed certified survey map that they submitted. Um, the reason for the variance is the, for the variance is that once these two lots would be created, they would both be less than the 100,000 square foot minimum lot size on a class three body of water, which 100,000 square feet is approximately 2.3 acres. Um, and there's also a 250 foot minimum width, which I believe they would meet that. The main reason for the variance is for that acreage. As you can see, it's currently 3.85, so you can't get 
to 2.3 acre parcels out of that. The property is zoned um, town zoning of Garfield. They do have their own town zoning. Um, so that was uh, a question in this case. Uh, we do have, I did pull up the town of Garfield ordinance that states that um, subdivision of land in the town of Garfield shall be conducted in compliance with all other provisions of this ordinance. Subdivision activity is also regulated by chapter 236 and by the Polk County subdivision ordinance. Um, to the extent of these requirements may differ, the more restrictive regulations shall apply. So the town of Garfield did approve this subdivision at their level. Um, I believe they probably have a, I don't know, if they have one acre, two acre minimum, um, but they did approve this to go to the county. Um, but it does stay here. We do have to um, enforce the most restrictive of the two, which is our class three restriction on the 100,000 square foot uh, lot size. Um, so yeah, I mentioned the town of Garfield approved the subdivision. The proposed lot will be used for a single family dwelling. I think it is approximately, um, we'll see on the sub, uh, certified survey map somewhere in here. Um, they do have it proposed as it will meet both the road and that back. Um, proposed access for the two pro new proposed lots would be off of that 143rd Street. Um, the existing dwelling driveway would be the same. The current lot was created in 2008 via certified survey map. Um, it was map 5713 volume two, page 46. Um, so at that time, they, it was created as a legal lot, um, being it met all the size requirements at that time. And there, the county did provide the proper class two notice as required for this hearing. And we did not receive any public comments on this request. I believe we have some pictures. Maybe if we could go to the certified survey map first. This is the proposed lot layout. Um, as you can see, lot two here is proposed at 78,314 square feet. Lot one is proposed at 87,166 square feet. Um, so as I mentioned, both of them are below the 100,000 square foot limit. Um, in acreages, the lot one is proposed at approximately two acres and lot two at 1.8 acres. And I have some pictures from the site. So it's kind of a, from the lake or the last three lake up to the road, kind of a ridge running along it there. So I just took some pictures going along that uh, contour where that house would be placed. You could go to the next picture. This is looking back towards current residence. This is, I believe, one of those accessory buildings. Next picture, the view from the top of that hill to the class three lake. This is the picture of uh, looking towards the current dwelling. Um, this is the septic on that CSM. Um, it is noted that they will be six and a half feet from the septic um, to the proposed lot line. So that would meet the setbacks for a drain field. This is looking towards the current accessory building. So I guess that other blue thing looks like a pontoon possibly. So that garage is in the left hand side of the picture. This is another picture. I think this is close to the proposed um, home location. It was kind of cleared out in that area. So, And this is looking straight at the lake. Um, there is a residence across the lake from the proposed second lot here. And this is looking towards the road. It's kind of hard to see the town road. 143rd Street is um, there. So would there be a driveway coming in off of there or 
Chip? Um, I don't know if we could ask the applicant that once they come up. I believe it would be a new driveway, but I'm not entirely sure. But just because the drain was kind of right in that location, that seemed to be an area that you would drive up, but we can ask them that. It's not in a floodplain. It's got enough elevation. Yeah. Looks yep. like that we're looking at. Yep. No floodplain. Okay. Um, there's no other wetlands on this or the proposed second lot. Do we know if 143rd uh, is maintained by the township or is it private? Town. The town does. It's a dead end. It's a town. The dead end, but the town does maintain it. Yes. And it is platted. I see it's platted with yeah. the ID number. Yep. Okay. I'm not sure at what point I should ask this question, but this is for Logan and Malia. I thought under the current statutes that the state said we we can't have lake classifications right now. That even that's what I thought it showed in our ordinances that you that you can't regulate based on lake classifications. classifications yeah, setback seventy five foot was taken away. You know, because we had 150 yeah, and the size. They might. I can't remember if they took the size part. They took the 75 feet is everything. Right. They did that. But well, Mo, give it a name. What does the class do like look like that? Like it would fit, wouldn't it? Look up oh. the ordinance. Man. I thought it was. <laughs> if somebody named the bot. In the ordinance, the uh, lake classifications and sizes, and it, it shows what we have. But it also shows what we have to adhere to with the state. That's with re regard to the zoning ordinances. That was that that was for one fifteen. Yeah, look, the shoreland ordinance didn't yeah. scroll down to so no setbacks. Yes, in sizes. Today, you're you're dealing with the sub subdivision ordinance. Well, but, if, but if the yeah. thousand square feet is down to 80, it would pass. Because they're at 87. Yeah, I, oh, 100,000. Yeah. I don't think the county is prohibited entirely of using lake classifications as a basis to differentiate how to, how to. Um, Do we know what a class two, what, what the square footage uh, changes to? I believe it's 60,000, I want to say. It's like 1.3 acres, so. If the town of Garfield would have named it, all right. See. Yeah, I mean, even a named lake, there's still a lot of class still, three yeah, named lakes. Yeah. Most of the smaller ones are Same. still class three. Class two is more of your um, rivers and streams, and then class one is the highly developed. Is the highly developed. There is some class two lakes out there, though. So this would fit pretty close into there. I mean, it isn't like it's a, a huge stretch right now. Yeah, I think. They I mean, to, to for square footage and everything. Yeah, they were way out. right on the edge. Yeah, I don't, yeah. not way out line looking at it both ways. OK, yeah, they would need 4.6 acres to make two even 2.3 acres out of it. And they have, I think, well, 3.85 point eight. They're about 0. 0.6 acres short. That's what I have for the staff report. Um, just to clarify, yeah, so this is the classification sizes in the subdivision ordinance. Um, and as far as I believe, that's still able to be um, enforced under that subdivision ordinance as a class of a lake. That's all I have for this initial staff report. Okay. Well, let's have the applicants here. Well. It's your name and Hi, I'm Sandra Steve Murr and my husband Glenn, who's not coming up with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've lived on that property since 1979, and when we purchased it, it was 1.48 acres, and that's that was the allowable, I guess. And since then, we expanded it, and now we'd like to subdivide it. So when you first bought it, it was it was 1.48. You remember what year? Um, 79. 79. And then we added the extra lots. So that was 1.48. The next lot was two. 
1.0, and then the next one was 1.3. Okay, and, you, and you go across the road also, don't you? We have across the road too. We have across the road too, okay. So originally it was under site. Well, that was right at the classification time, wasn't it? So, all right. Okay, anybody have any other questions? I, okay, well, thank you for that. All right. And Ed, is anybody else here for or against? I'm David Nelson. I'm representing the town of Garfield. <clears throat> I'm on the town board. I'm a supervisor and and I also chair the planning commission. So uh, to and I I didn't send <clears throat> the dates uh, of the approval. We have, the planning commission approved uh, this on January 15th and the town board approved it on February 13th. Um, we were not aware that that was considered a class three lake. There's a barbed wire fence that runs through the lake where Gordy Shock used to pasture cows and the, the water level is higher now and it stays stays up now. But uh, I wasn't aware that that was a class three lake um, when we we made the decision. But uh, we we do think that uh, Ed, Ed asked me to come and and uh, voice my support for it. Um, it is uh, appropriate, I think, that we approve that. But any questions for the town? I would certainly. We that is zoned residential, and and <clears throat> it is by town standards a two acre minimum. So that's that's the town standard. Huh? Okay. So so I met with everything you guys. Through the planning full board, it met all your standards. Yeah, we're good. Uh, and then you would do the driveway permit, would you not? Does the town? We, do that? we figured that there would be a driveway coming in off of 143rd. Okay. Uh, we didn't have that plotted on the plan yet. Okay. But but that would be okay. That would be done. And we do have a driveway ordinance, and and it would fit within that because you have to be 200 feet from. The nearest other driveway and and we're good there too okay so it fits all your so it did fit everything for the township okay well oh, any other any other questions of the township no well thank you very much thank you. any other questions if not let's go does anybody else have any concerns or anything? I just have uh, the highlight. Uh, is this on all of the lots, maybe subject to future special assessments for upgrade improvements of a road? Is that normal on a CSM or all the roads? I believe so. Okay. The town just rebuilt that road. That, I was going to say it was pretty much done, wasn't it? Yeah, the town just rebuilt that road, took clear everything and uh, repaved it two years ago. Okay. It was, yeah, about two years ago. So it's okay. I just seen it was uh, as a note on here. Not I haven't seen that very often again. Okay. All right, go ahead, Logan. Yeah, we can go through the findings. Um, so the request was to subdivide one existing lot to create two lots via a certified survey map. Both the newly created lots would be substandard. The current lot is 3.85 acres and conforming to the Chapter 32 Polk County Code of Ordinances. The property has frontage on an unnamed body of water, which is considered a Class 3 lake. Section 32-68, Parent D, requires 100,000 square feet or approximately 2.3 acres and a minimum average width of 250 feet on a Class 3 lake. The property is zoned um, by the town, Town Garfield. The town of Garfield did approve the subdivision with the town board checklist. The current lot has a dwelling and two accessory buildings. The proposed lot would be for a single family dwelling. Um, the proposed lots would both be accessed by 143rd Street, which is a town road. 
the current lot was created in 2008 via certified survey map 5713 volume 2 page 46 and the county did provide a proper class 2 legal notice prior to this hearing and did not receive any public comments on this request okay um so the variance um I kind of went off of what we normally would do for BOA so they there is a requ uh, requirement to do an unnecessary hardship for the the BOA variances. Um, the current Stevermer lot is conforming, is a current conforming lot to both the minimum width and or size. Um, the proposed layout creates two new lots that don't meet the minimum size requirement on a class three lake. The new proposed lot is to construct a single family dwelling. <laughs> Physical property limitations. The lot was reconfigured in 2008 and met the minimum lot standards at that time. Subdivision of this lot is not allowed without a variance due to the current lot not having enough acreage to split into two conforming lots. Um, not contrary to public interest, the proposed reconfiguration of the lot would result in one additional lot being created on that class three lake. And as far as staff recommendation, the staff does not have a recommendation on this case just due to the um, subdivision ordinance being approved by the Environmental Services Committee. Um, requiring that lot size based on that late classification. All I have. OK. Uh, any other question? I mean. With the variance, can we do a condition that because they I was just looking at this right now, they should not need any other variances to build on this, should they? Correct, and you don't. So that's what we're kind of looking. Right, and you don't need to find an unnecessary hardship. Unnecessary hardship is specific to zoning uh, variances because you enacted the and are in charge of monitoring the subdivision ordinance and approving those things. You have to determine whether this variance would meet those uh, purposes of your subdivision or ordinance. And if you find that they do, then you can grant the, the variance without needing to determine whether or not there's some other unnecessary. So when they would come back like for a building to get a building permit. Right, it, yes. Then they'd be OK because if this variance was approved. Because within the zoning ordinance, there would still be a buildable area in that newly created lot. So yes, there wouldn't be another than Board of Adjustment variance that would need to. Because that would almost be a condition because if you gave them a variance and then put a variance on top of a variance, yeah. you'd have a variance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they don't need any. I'm looking at the CSM exhibit, whatever we're going to have number, because there is room on both sides. There's room for a septic system, a well. And if the 28 by 60, if it's the house, there's room for a garage. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. When we thought we had the go ahead with it, we did have a perk and they can do a conventional sewer. Oh, so you do have that. That's already on there. Yeah. Oh, so you a soil test is already done and you can do it. OK, that helps too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the variance would be, yeah, for creating a buildable lot. Um, that would be that's what the variance. Would that's be the variance yeah, for the buildings or anything. Yeah. So I mean, I think if they if you created this buildable lot, if their plans change or something and they requested a reduced road setback or something else, that would just be completely through zoning. Um, if it would be a, sh a zoning variance, then that would go to the BOB. Would it go wouldn't to be BLB. this being okay. looked at again. Yeah. Yeah. And right now it looks like they don't need any other variances to, to do what they want to be. Yeah, what they have. Okay. <laughs> what they have to <laughs> and the town went through planning and that and they approved it and everything too. So I think. And this is a dead end road, so everybody right. knows that. Uh, OK. Any other questions from anybody or any concerns? Well, that's good to know. I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve from Doug. I'll second it. Sure. Anybody see any other concerns? It should be good then. But then all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. That one will go through. 
So that that doesn't have to go through the county board either, does it? Okay. So they can walk over and get permits today. <laughs> okay. Got through all those. We'll be up to number 11, an update. Or yeah, I just have four things. Is it okay if I speak? Just four. Okay. Just have four minutes. <laughs> um, number one, the BOA met last week. They met last Thursday and they held a public meeting um, to discuss Blue Rock Quarry. Um, they summarily, they made motion and, and um, approved the summarily affirmation of the record and the action of the Environmental Services Committee regarding the Blue Rock Quarry. So as I understand now from council that will move on to circuit court. Again. Again. All right, number two, uh, Tim Anderson and I did meet with the uh, the new uh, community resources and development agent um, yesterday, Allison Sauter. Um, not that not that the committee is over that part of extension, but just trying to figure out our collaboration efforts with that CRD agent as we move into several planning efforts. Um, it was interesting to note that um, Allison is a 50-50 employee with St. Croix County and Polk County. Although her office is physically in St. Croix County, so just trying to make sure because right now I think we see her about once a month. So looking at 50 50, trying to make sure that we're getting projects and that we're utilizing that service um, uh, and how we can work together uh, for projects and options specific to Polk County. Um, Number three, uh, the committee is formally invited to attend the solar ribbon cutting event that's going out, uh, going on out in Georgetown. I think they call it Georgetown Solar. I'm not as familiar with the project as maybe some of you are. Um, that yeah, event, that big. event is on May 23rd from 10 to 11 a.m. It's at 1867 100th Street, County Road I in Georgetown. Um, I do believe that we will need to notice a potential. Thanks, Siobhan is nodding your head at me. OK, um, and in case of bad weather, they're going to do a make update on May 31st. I'm not sure if I'm the liaison or contact for that, but if we get information, if it changes, we can let you know if anybody for sure plans to attend. Maybe let us know. No, which, which solar? Which? Yeah, we, this is in Georgetown. This is the big one. So it's the big one. It is the not, not the apple. Not the yeah, apple. Yeah, not the big well, this is the one that's right by the Georgetown Town uh -huh. Hall. Um, so I was contacted by the company that built that one. They're proposing another one up in Luck. So and they knew there was a lot of questions when this renewable energy ordinance got proposed. So she just brought it up that they would be they're open to you guys coming out there, seeing it, describing the operations, just as far as kind of the conditions that you guys we're looking at putting in the ordinance to see if that would you know, alleviate when they come back through for another one. If you'd have a better idea of you know what is going on out there, what it looks like, and how the operation is um, being done. So the times again. So again, that was May twenty third, and and the ribbon cutting is from ten to eleven a.m. Um, address eighteen sixty seven one hundred Street. Um, That'll be in the minutes or contact me if you need any other information or should it be on the website so more people can see. Yeah, she did send me an invite so I can forward that on to you guys. OK. And just the final thing I had is that um, the zoning department hiring process is complete. Um, we have added Hannah Calicote as our administrative assistant up front. Um, she was previously uh, our our. Um, up front desk person here in the government center. So um, she's kind of a familiar face. And uh, and then with so with Dylan, Winter and Kara on the team, Logan's team is complete. So good news as we enter in bu busy building season. Um, and I guess final, sorry, I always have one extra thing, but we're entered, we're entering in budget season now. So that's what we'll I'll be working on with Administrator Mo, Council Malone. And um, yeah, we'll roll into this 2025 budget season. So, all right. Any questions of 
I can go right into um, the review work plan then for next week, if that's so, or for next yep. month, if that's okay. Um, we will finalize our um, our Lake District appointments. Then I'll work with Administrator Mo and staff on finalizing those. Those will come to the Environmental Services Committee then next month. Um, on June 5th is your next meeting. Um, also, you will see the final annual report for land information. And being this is my first year back in six years, I'm also trying to figure out if there's like an overall environmental services type report that kind of gets merged together. Um, I don't know that there has been one, but stay tuned. I don't know there has. Um, so that will be on next next month. And then I was trying to look for my sheet. If there was something else, you probably have it in front of you, Kim. If there was something else on work yeah. next deed. Oh, tax deed. Tax deed. Has that changed yet? That back two sixteen. Has that nothing's changed yet? Have? No, but it's moving. Mm -hmm. uh, if you county owned properties, we have. That's the administrator's job. How did we get that? Because <laughs> I like you. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was under general government. You gonna put it on us too to see if we still have the list? <laughs> Oh, you like browsing through the nice list. Yeah. It's got a pink highlighter. It's, yeah, it's, I, got, I got the pages. I'd say. Uh, and we don't know if we'll have any public hearings for the next one yet. Uh, there's, I think there's one for sure, maybe two. Okay. Yeah. So if they're redistricted, it isn't too bad, I guess, the meetings, you know, to drag. I mean, I think it was decided that if we could get one meeting a month, and I mean, even now, nine, ten, you know, we're, we're that we're going fairly decent hearings to be heard. I think we did fairly well, yeah, and not to have a second meeting to keep for staff to prepare and do everything. Sure, uh, budget that, 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 fees, the lake, and then if there's any public hearings, that's we should be good then, shouldn't we? Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right. Thirty. Any updates? Judge Tolan should be issuing his uh, oral ruling this month on. Or is it June? Do anyway, Mayor Tolman, show up. For that? Okay. I think it's in June. June. I think it's June. So we'll send out. A reminder, and then I did speak with Matt Tome yesterday briefly, and and there's no no word on the Stour Trail litigation. He did ask about whether or not they've approved they meaning the DNR has approved the other uh, master plan, and um, we haven't heard anything. So I they won't do the cat tail till this one's done. They they play the game is yeah. what they're doing. So, so they hold them both up for three years, four. So, so if we you know if we don't hear anything soon from the Court of Appeals, because that's really, I, I don't think we're going to hear anything from the circuit court, but we hear something from the Court of Appeals. I mean, that's kind of, we're getting to that point where any day now it could come out. Sure. So. In the Blue Rock, they haven't set the date on that one then yet. Yeah. Uh, no, now the applicant, excuse me, force needs to file their uh, writ of cert with the circuit court challenging this decision. Uh, okay. And then, and then they, get, they haven't filed it yet. They so then they'll it. serve us, and we'll put oh. that on there. But it's kind of a a, a redo because we thought we were there at circuit court before, and then the judge kicked it back to kicked the court. it back, and now he gets it again anyway. Okay. Will that come up under force against the Blue Rock Warrior? Yeah. Uh, no, a force against the Environmental Services Committee. Against us. Oh. Oh. Okay. And then Blue Rock. Quarry, the applicants will intervene as interested parties, but it's it's the force Four. challenging the decision this committee made. Okay. Can we push that cat tail one, or do I got to go to the uh, DNR office and just stand there for a week, or what? Oh, that would be great. Could you? You could do that. Thinking about <laughs> it. I think we make that a motion. That I could get you a tent. In yeah, a tent. tent. A tent. And a flyer. Would you like a tent? Yeah, Kim will stand there until it's done. How about that? Oh, <laughs> that first right. week of June. <laughs> All right. Anything? Anybody have any? Oh no, we don't need a close. 
No, because it's a litigation. If we had litigation, more of an update, then we go into court and say we have to hear talk strategy, but not much time. So who's 14? No. Does Pam know that? No, nope. she's not aware of that. Oh, is the new person happy? I, I, I moved to adjourn. Is that it? <laughs> that was my job. There you that go. was your job, but now it's my it's job. Your, I, it's yours. I moved to adjourn. I'll well, second it. Does anybody need a second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Where do we go? Good job.